Hi everyone, welcome to Stamping Flair. My name is Richelle Laird Smith and I'm so glad you've joined me for Multicultural Stamping Day. You will be viewing this a little bit late, about a day late, because I was meant to present yesterday and I tried to and I had uh, severe tra technical difficulties with Facebook and I recorded a couple of times and it just didn't happen for me. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation despite it being one day late and uh, you have enjoyed all the other demonstrators who have shared so much with you. It has been a great event. Thank you Stephanie Fletcher for organizing it and for all the time you put into it and for inviting me to be part of it. It truly is an honor for me to take part and to share in it. I am based in Melbourne. My name is Rochelle and uh, I migrated to Australia 35 years ago from Sri Lanka as a teenager. So I'll tell you a little bit about my life in Australia first. Uh, I live in the coastal town of Blindbad. It's a small town and with my partner Adrian and my daughter Cassidy who is 18. As I said, I've been here 35 years in Australia and all the time in Melbourne. I did some study here as well. So I have experienced quite a bit of the Australian culture and Australia is my home. Uh, I have my heritage, my Sri Lankan heritage, which I bring with me. And I just wanted to share a little bit about that because Australia has provided me, it has uh, blessed me with lots of things I couldn't have had in Sri Lanka. It has provided me safety. It has provided me a home. Uh, it has given me many blessings. It, it, if not for being in Australia, I can tell you I wouldn't even experience stamping because it would have been so... Um, I don't even remember seeing anything like that in Sri Lanka, but for instance, even art classes were out of our reach financially to be able to go there because it was more... It was quite expensive to do that sort of stuff. So even though I like things like that, it wasn't always possible. So it has... It's so readily available. So we are really blessed being in this country and uh, I came to Australia with my mum and my dad and my sister. They have since passed on and uh, my dad in Sri Lanka was a youth worker, Christian youth worker. He worked with uh, families, helping them and used to do a lot of camps and um, organizing events for youth and uh, my mum worked in a Christian broadcasting company, they used to radio, do radio programs yeah, with the head office was in America and uh, they used to do uh, correspondence courses, Bible correspondence courses and my mom used to correct the English courses. We used to ha have it in Sinhalese and Tamil as well and just go back to the Bible broadcast. And uh, we um, were a Christian home and we were very open and our home was always open to visitors. We always had someone in and then people drop in uh, uh, literally at the drop of a hat pretty much. You got it. Yep, coming and yep, home is open. You sleep on the floor, whatever. We had two bedrooms and we'd have a whole lot of people come. You feed them, whatever. And it was just an open house. Uh, so it was a very um, homely atmosphere and I studied in a Christian school and uh, in that school we had different religions, different races, different cultures represented and um, amongst my friends I had all different uh, religions and Buddhist, Hindus, Muslim, we were from different races and uh, uh, foreigners as well so we had uh, we just got along and we still get along. We're all based in different parts of the world and uh, it's just lovely to have really tight friendships and that's what um, keeps me going. I haven't been there for years but it's just what, what I want to go back for is for the friendships more than anything else. My grandparents were from India so uh, Sri Lanka have different uh, races or cultures represented. You've got your Sinhalese, which is um, the majority, and then you've got your Tamils and your Moors, uh, different, uh, and Berbers, which are 
of European descent, so uh, uh, different cultures, and I'm what what you'd call an Indian Tamil, so it originated from India, and we never spoke any thing, any other language other than English at home. Uh, however, I did study in Sinhalese, and I don't know a word of Tamil despite being from that um, origin. Uh, the reason being, we could not study in English at school because we were not of European descent. So uh, we had to study in either Sinhalese or English, and we could we studied English as a second language. And it is quite funny because during class we'll be studying in another language and then during recess we're talking English among our friends so it was um, and then we come home and talk English so it, it, when I came to Australia that's what I love most being able to study in English as a teenager I'm going wow this is fantastic um, and uh, we studied in Sinhalese because for job prospects uh, it would have been better at the time um, so, Although I've been out of the country for so long, Sri Lanka always holds a special place in my heart. So now I have, I have a, a few things I want to share with you about Sri Lanka, but I will do that while I'm making my card. My card is based on one of the industries that is very popular in Sri Lanka. So we have several, uh, I guess, uh, businesses. So we've got tourism, and we had, um, you know, we're famous for our palm trees. So we've got coconuts, your rubber plantations, your tea is a big um, industry. And the textile industry is huge. And one of that, the textiles that is made is called batik. It is like a tie-dye effect. And that is what I want to share with you on a card today. So I'm going to replicate that in a card that technique so it's, it's a lot of fun it's what like it's like water coloring it is water coloring it can get messy but i hope you enjoy it and as i share a little bit more about uh, the land of my birth and i hope you enjoy uh, this time and feel free to um, craft with me or uh, try out the technique i share because uh, i've got lots of examples to show you at the end Due to my technical difficulties, I had even more because each time I kept creating more, so it's a bonus, getting different uh, designs. So I will turn my camera around so you can see what I am doing. So first of all, I'll tell, I've got to show you what I've got. I have got a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock. And I'll give you the reasonings for my colored choices in a minute. I have got, this is a printable which Stephanie created specially for this event. So I, I, that's something, uh, it's a, a peacock and it's one of our um, wildlife that's there in Sri Lanka, very famous. So I, I picked that. Uh, some bumblebee cardstock and this is the new one. Um, USB and I keep forgetting uh, names of USB. This is the in symmetry one and a piece of uh, shimmery white cardstock to do our water coloring on. So we're first going to do the water coloring so we can let it dry somewhat while I get things ready and I'll always have the heat gun as well so we can. Uh, can speed the process up a bit. So the colours I have picked today are based on the Sri, on Sri Lankan Airlines uniform. The girls there wear, the hostesses wear beautiful saris and uh, if you just google Sri Lankan Airlines hostesses you will see their beautiful saris and it's Bermuda Bay star colour with peacock feathers on it. So um, the, the design is peacock feathers. So that's the colours I've gone for in my card. And of course there's the peacock. So we have got Bermuda Bay, Just Jade, Old Olive and Knight of Navy. So those are my four colours I am using. I may dry it off colour in between as well. 
and obviously ink refills on there. Now, a little tip, if you guys have ink refills at any time and you want to do some water coloring, just take your a clear block, insert that, and now that becomes your palette. And you can just use that as any, sometimes I use this even if I have a refill, because I just want to see in time and that, and it just gives me a little bit more control than when it's all this thick. So that's just great. If I do that, I'm going to spritz my cardstock well. And we're going to give it a good spritz. And it, once it, dry, if it dries, it, during the process of you creating this, you can always um, have some more water spritz it up. So, let's get the excess off so we don't have too much trouble doing that. And um, so I'm just going to drop this color here and there and I might dab off a little bit. Um, and you can watch me just add this and it just creates this lovely effect. Now Sri Lanka is a teardrop shaped island. Just think of India and the Indian Ocean. It's called a resplendent island. It used to be known as Ceylon and now it is known as the Democratic, Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. It also used to be known as the Pearl of the Indian Ocean, Paradise, those are some names here. Uh, it's known by. If population is around 22 million. Um, uh, area of about 25,000 square miles. Now, just to put it in terminology or area that we in Australia may understand, it's about the population of Australia in land mass of Tasmania size. So it's pretty condensed and congested and um, traffic there is crazy and um, no one follows the road rules um, and if you take your life in your own hand and you drive there i haven't driven there but you just go with in one of the suburbs it's awesome it's like a ride now i'm just adding temporary the bearing and just uh, Filling it in, and I do want this as a bit of my predominant color because I love it, and plus it is the color I'm going for. So I just added it on top of my just jade. The official language in Sri Lanka is Sinhalese, like I was saying. Um, so 75 percent of those people are Sinhalese. You get Sri Lankan channels at 11 percent, and the Sri Lankan moors are 9 and Indian Tamils are 4% and then you get 0.5% of your mix of burgers who are like we were colonized by Dutch and Portuguese and then the British so origin and other uh, indigenous people as well we have makes up that 0.5% 0.5% now because of that various colonizations, we get a mix of food as well. So lots of times you get to be on the food, but it's got origins from the Netherlands or, you know, so it's a bit of a mix. We, know, we love our curries, but I don't always cook curry. We need too many curries to do that. We, have, we, do, we can't just have one meat. We have to have one meat and three veg. And but they all cook differently. One's dried, one's um, curried, one's made with coconut milk, and one's made with pepper. And, so it's a bit of a process. And when you're working, you just don't have time to do all that. I think my daughter would love to curry every day if she could have it. She's born here. I think the Sri Lankan comes out in there most of the time. Okay, so I've done that, then I'm just going to add a bit of Night of Navy. i move my just shade away for the moment before I mess it up. Sri Lanka also has um, various religions, so Buddhism is 30% approximately, so that's the largest. Um, 
the majority religion, you've got Hinduism and it's Islam and Christianity with the population percentage of 0.5%. So you've got lots of different churches there and um, my dad used to preach as well in the different churches. Um, so you know, when he was a youth minister, he used to go to different churches and preach. So that was us, his Sundays that he found as well. And when my dad came here, he was a pastor of the church too. So what he called a PK, a preacher's kid. I really love this color so it's coming out. It's just really, really pretty. And the beauty is none of these will be the same. So I'm just going to give that a blast with the heat gun. And I'm going to move my ink pad so they don't dry out too much. And apologize for the noise. And I just got this on setting one. So this is the base of our batik. Just move it around a bit, just you don't want the card stuff burning. Which sometimes has happened, I managed to give it a tinge of brown. Tinge of, uh, what do you call? Caramelization. Now, Clean that up, and I just wanted to get dried a touch before I added my old olive so that it didn't get messy and get that gunky color. All these technical terms gunky. Murky. <laughs> so that just adds, you will see. So have it browse and definitely look at what I'm replicating in the color wise. It's not the actual uniform, but. It's just a beautiful color in that uniform, which I always admire. And then I have a sari, beautiful. My mom used to wear sari, but she used to wear the different ones, but like on special occasions, the ones with the gold and things like that. I don't know how to drape it. It's like six meters of fabric. You've got to be able to know how to carry it and drape it. Then I'm going to add a little bit more on the bay, just to finish that off. Maybe I might just go in and then a little bit of the just straight out of my whole piece. I won't need this whole piece, but I just want to make sure I have it if it's needed. It's pretty, isn't it? But if you can go to town on this, I'm going to show you some cards after I made uh, just different colors and uh, they just all turn out different. So lots of fun to be had with this technique. And then sometimes I just go underneath as well. Just, just Depends on the piece. I don't always go and then you feel it warping, just turn it over. You do want it dry for the next um, part I'm going to do. You can just be a bit of white space there, and I don't want that white space. So, sorry, you had to watch me dry this. I didn't prepare uh, in the sense of early because I was going to do this live and it is live, it is so thick, kind of, not as live as I would have liked it. And it's getting there. So the next step, oops, the next step, if you heard me over that, semi dry, it's pretty dry. There's still a few patches of wetness, but I can well, a little bit, I might get that.
that maybe has come up like a bit of a purple, hasn't it? Oh, nice. Colors this side. Inks can be a disaster sometimes. So I've been a stamping up demonstrator, just a little bit of a me to tell you about what I do. I've been a demonstrator for just over six years. My um, other job, which I work four days a week, I am I work in a school. So that's that's my four day job, and stamping up is my pretty much my other full time job. Ooh. I just dropped one of my my grid paper. Um, it pretty much takes a fair bit of time because I love it and I come home and I do it. And it's just what I love to do, and I love teaching people and sharing what I really enjoy doing. So I'm going to go this way because my cards vertical. I am going to do. Yeah. I have one with. I uh, need my bl blending brush. I use one for all the blues, and I have one for greens and one for reds, and it just makes my life easier than having to wash it every time. So I'm saying I'm a little demonstrator for six years. Um, probably run it my business as properly as a business for about four now. Loving it. It keeps me happy. I can tell you it's pulling out of some dark times as well. So it's actually when I'm saying it's really good. Even if you can't create, I always say sometimes even the idea of something can definitely get on to a problem if you um you know, get the I guess stepping up with like copy those cards in there or copy the color schemes, get inspiration from the catalog. It is amazing. What can be done if you just keep a layout? There's so much you can do with that catalog. Yes, it's got a thousand beautiful cards in there, which we all want every one of them. But um, see it as, as inspiration to um, give you ideas. I, I do it all the time. Sometimes it just you don't draw a blank. And it's amazing what you can do. And once you start creating, then the ideas start coming. So I'm just using this uh, mask. We've got eight in um, our store. So you get two lots of four. So there's two different designs. One new lot came in this um, current catalog. So you get, they're so handy. They're very, um, they're not very costly. They're quite cheap actually. And the masks, and you can do so much with them. Spritz over them, and color like this burning brush is the burning brush, sponge over them. You can um, use um, textured paste on it. So, so many, many options to do stuff. So, you've got this beautiful pattern that's developing over there, and because of the fluffy at the back, the background look at the back, it's kind of good. I'm going to cut this card stock down now. Oops, sorry. So I just want it at 9.3 by 13.6. Gonna try and get the best beat. That's what we want. And with a, with a mask, you can always. Um, real like laid over again so you can continue the pattern that's the good thing if necessary but i don't think it's really necessary in this case because it just adds to that look but some of it is a bit lighter some of it's darker oh, oh i didn't cut the other side so. 9.9 and 9.3 i said yeah and that will give me a whole extra bit I can put down the side of my inter on the inside of the card or on my inner line. So, a bit of something you can use there. Uh, I love teaching, card making. If you are enjoying this video, 
And um, if you'd like to see more projects by part of my newsletter, you can go to StartingFlare.com and you will see all my classes up there. I have lots of classes in the mail, a car club, a whole different area events. At the moment, I haven't been at home, but over the weekend, I actually met at a cafe with people just there who wanted to get together. So, uh, lots of class options, but you can even, no matter, you can, no matter where you are in Australia, you can get a class. Um, there's also options for you to purchase a PDF worldwide, PDF worldwide, and uh, yeah, I do all the design, and you can just go and create with everything that I told you. So now I'm just attaching this piece on a bumblebee uh, panel. Love that color. Love the color. Oh, it looks so good with that peacock. Then I've got a panel of this paper which I'm going to layer onto my uh, Bermuda Bay card itself. I'm also, I'm also on Facebook and you can follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest. Several ways you can see what I'm up to and some cards that I'm making and projects. I do take part in a lot of blog talks um, and I love blog talks because they give you some curly ones, some curly uh, pins sometimes and then, whoa, make me think. It gets me out of my comfort zone many times. Now to work out placement of the ribbon. I have an idea for it, but I don't want to do it here. I'm just, just, that's looking great, isn't it? The bumblebee card, the BSP, and that's when I shine on that. So, I'm going to stick that straight down, I think, and I, um, do something else with the uh, twine. That's an elegant um, uh, trim. You get the gold and the silver in a pack. It's going to be elegantly fed trim. I could be renaming it, but that's okay. You know what I mean. I'm constantly renaming things. I also do um, a creative escape on a Wednesday night, which is my Facebook Live, and I post that on YouTube. So, so I know some people don't have Facebook, and um, you can always uh, catch me on um, YouTube. So yes. I hope to see you guys there sometime. I love when I can catch up with them. Um, I've made so many friends through stamping, just for my painters as well, and just who have become like really good friends. It's just wonderful. Alright. So now we've got that. I'm going to do I think I want a little curling twine under there. Right. And I'll show you how to do that. I am adding a couple of bits of um, it's gonna turn that over. Just in case the blue on the top of it, which it already has done, but I'll do a bit of a camouflage on that. We do camouflage all the time. We're creative and inventors. So I am going to just, just loop that. Just give myself a little bit of probably have a little bit but let's just give yourself more and then this does be a bit of a twist which is a bit of content and you have to have a little bit of patience with it if you want to do this particular thing it ties fine Scissors and I'm 
and sometimes I even split those ribbons and they stick better. Okay, adjust like that. Once you've got your um, double sided tape in place or tearing tape, um, you will you can adjust that nicely. I'll just manipulate that there. I'm not in a circle. Uh, what is at the back? No one can see, only you. Unless it comes off, and that would happen once to me, which is hilarious. I turned to my cover, and then I realized that the front bit had come off, like the main part, something like this. And I had meant to put the sticky back on before I posted it, but I was in such a rush. I went and posted it to this lady and, um, in America, and we had such a good laugh. Because I said, when you get it, you're going to have to stick it back together. Okay, let's stick it like that. Like, I always, when I'm having, like, um, you see, like, the peacock's looking away, you want, like, you can either have it looking this way, but I like that backward kind of glance. And shape your cards in a C shape, so your eye draws towards that point, so that helps with design. You don't always have to have it like that, but just a bit of a design tip there. Alright, my next thing I'm going to do is stamp a sentiment. Now this stamp sentiment, I just picked a very simple sentiment, and it's from the Blossoms in Bloom stamp set. And I'm picking Thinking of You, and I am thinking of all my friends, Australia and Kiloka, and those who have been really there for me to uh, lots and lots of times it's been good, bad, and um, I think it's always important. And um, I just thought it was reflective of what we were doing. Get my, I'm going to emboss it in white. So I'll put my white embossing powder and my scrap card stuff. I'll just use my embossing powder to get static down. You can use like powder or anything like that. Contour. Just put it in a soft. And it works. Okay. I'm just saying it I'm going to do that very hard start. So it's kind of bouncy out. And I like to leave my embossing paste, embossing more powder there just for a few seconds. Because then it really grabs the vessel mark. Embossing is a lovely technique. You don't need to do heaps of it, you just add that extra little bit on your hands. Okay, so I'll just keep the um, heat gun a bit, uh, so just bear with me with the noise. So I'm just going to bring in my die cutting machine, the mini one. It's called the mini stamping cutter and emboss machine. Get my plates. 
and I've got the Casco labels guys, and I, this is the same um, one I use for the Peacock as well, and I found, the, I love those guys because it's got some really plastic shapes there, so I'm just working on where I want this to go, whether I want it to go that way or that way, because that will um, depend on my placement of the of the sentiment. I am tipping on this side, in which case I will probably move that little bit onto that side. And it can be done. Wait, if you hold your breath. Do you hold your breath when you do stuff like that, which takes a little bit of extra effort? I do. Um, it works. I've got to keep reminding myself that I've got to show you some other, lots of other cards I've made. They are in different colour schemes and they look great. Well, this is a little bit wonky, so I might redo that. And because we don't want a wonky sentiment, uh, I'm just trying to think. I could do it on this side, but I won't because we want the nice sticking. And next time I shall use washi tape. So you can see me being dressed in thick eyes. This happens. The joy of live of live television. Of live reviewing. <laughs> okay. Let's try again. Right. I will this one take long. These guys are ready to go by. And I haven't even used my embossing buddy, and it doesn't look good, so that piece of that stuff looks a bit bad. Do you see first and then go, oh, I have no idea. I'm going to cut a bit of this kind of stuff which I had. You want a nice clean piece of card stuff to emboss on. So sorry guys, I'm, I mucked that up. That is my mistake. Something like that and at the end of the day makes less of a Right. There we go. Bring it up, not necessarily going, I'm just getting a bit of practice as to how we're going to do this. And I have the washi tape there, I don't know why I didn't use it sometimes. Not thinking. Washi tape just keeps wheezing, wheezing like that. It's making just a bit old. And if this doesn't work, it's going to have to do. Alright. So we'll put this sentiment down. And I'm going to try and, like I said, um, another thing I do do 
You can use your uh, heat gun and it will take that off easy. But I'll just turn that down. Get that onto the other side because I think it will balance out better with the ribbon on the other side. That's just what I'm thinking. I don't know. Eh? Let's see whether we can fix it up. You know how you have brilliant ideas? It might not seem that brilliant after you do it, but anyway. That's sitting fine. I don't know, but we'll see whether this is better. The balance might be better than I don't know. Let's check it out. I can't wait to show you what I made with them um, previously as well. They were all related to with this magic technique, but it also relates to Sri Lanka and somehow connected in some, some special way. So, I'm just cut down on dimensionals and I am also the back right there. So, right against the end of the card, this gives you good balance. It's not very loud. Now, I'm bringing in my all favorite holiday um, jewels or holiday rhinestones. And I want some yellow ones there. And I think I want the yellow ones. Let's see. Maybe even the. Yeah. The good thing with these, they do mix and match a bit. The green might look nice too. That looks nice as well. Choices, choices. I've seen half of the blue guys. Maybe that might look a bit. Okay, there we go. I want to cover my little boogie there. So I'll go up here because it's a bit stiff. It's um, what do you call it? It's very um. I was looking for a sentiment that said. I don't want to be talking about that, that will work perfectly with the pink up on it. Take a big tool, it's the best, to add little embellishments like this. Um, all of our placement goes. Sometimes placing these rhinestones takes longer than the um, actual process of the card making. Okay, so let's just leave that there. I don't know if you can see that right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there we are. That, that one's that better. So it's just like this. There you go. So that's on my little peacock card. And I've got a little, a couple of little strips I can always do a bit of masking on that and I've got that for the inside of the card so it nicely matches so always make it a little bit bigger if you don't if you need it or not then you can always use it which is really good so this is this pick up is from the printables um, which was created for this particular event so I use it and you can create with any of those colors you like I also like that particular mask for this peacock because it has that look of peacock feathers behind. Now to show you some of the cards I have made here. Well, you can see it. This was done on watercolor, the fully 100 watercolor paper. Uh, with the, the colors I chose were based on the colors of the Sri Lankan flag. So I, I had some merry mellow, a yellow, and uh, I can't actually remember it. And a clips of coral at an end there. It might have been, it was Rainbow Melody clips of coral and um, Mary Marlowe. So I mixed those up because they were, uh, reminded me of the Sri Lankan flag and I created that background with another mask. This is another printable which is available and the elephant is part of my mainstream wildlife in Sri Lanka. If you go to Sri Lanka, you are going to have to go to the Philippines, there's a couple of those elephants, and 
see them begging and they suck it all the way you want. So it that was the uh, defect of a while. Um, I didn't put a sentiment on that because I wasn't sure what I really wanted on that and sometimes I like the grey. I just like because it had the gold and I thought it's quite pretty. This card is done in all in greens and that's an um, mini evergreen card base. Uh, and I use the Timeless Tropical Stamp Set. The Timeless Tropical Stamp Set uh, just reminded me of Canada with its palm trees and the high business which I'm going to show you in a minute. It just reminded me so much of Sri Lanka and when it was Sri Lanka, it was in the legs. And um, that's why I can't say sensitive. And another one of those masks, which really comes up well, that's Kathy Says Palm Shop. Now, my first take on this um, recording, uh, so this is take number one, is what I did first. Uh, is so the same mask I used there. These were in all in pink, as a polish pink, um, magenta madness, and I had um, a bit of a yellow. I had we had mango melody there too, and then I masked with blackberry glitz, the deeper color, and uh, a piece of uh, blue rare planted designer series paper, and I picked that sentiment because it says our friendship is timeless and it reminds me of all my friends all over the world or in Sri Lanka or in here in Australia no matter what friends I made who are valuable again I think of friendships and I think that's the most important thing when you celebrate cultures I think a lot of the time it's based on your home and your culture uh, your friends you make and it's centered around that so this was take number two of this card I could have put another dimension on there while I think about it because <laughs> it's lifting. So take number two was a slight variation on this. Same colour, same um, flower. I used a bit more daffodil delight in the centre and uh, this flower just uses polished pink. Here I used polished pink bloody flamingo and the daffodil delight there as I did there. The difference with this is a different mask, but when I masked instead of using blackberry bliss, I used polished pink directly on that. So just see what, same card, just a few variations. What do you like better? Do you like the one with the uh, polished pink or the deeper tones of the blackberry bliss? So there's five cards made with that beautiful butter technique. I hope you get to give it a try at home and, and it enjoyed the presentation that's what you do so you can see that and i'm just gonna say goodbye now i appreciate you having taken the time to watch it um it has been an absolute pleasure to take part in this event and share a little bit about my life and my culture and my new home in australia and what I enjoy with both cultures and how we have formed friendships across the world. So thank you so much guys for watching it and enjoy all the presentations. Make sure you hop to, along to everyone and have a check out of what they've shared with you. Uh, see you soon. Bye.